Hello all and welcome to another edition of Red Marmot Gaming. As always, I'm the Red Marmot, and today we are taking a look at sea monster hunting in Black Desert Online. This is going to be a brief overview on some tips and tricks to sea monster hunting. For starters, sea monster hunting can only take place in the uncharted seas, so that's everything outside of the main seas, the Nox Seas, Balanos Islands, etc. Everything north of Lemma, in particular this region that I'm marking here, is a good spot to hunt sea monsters. In that location you'll find things like hickorus, some cads, the occasional nine shark, and small ships here and there. Sea monster hunting can be very lucrative for a guild. If your guild is interested in sea monster hunting, you should get very familiar with the Uncharted Sea. And today I'm going to show you a few things that you may or may not know about this Uncharted Sea. First off, you want to head towards Lemma Island or that region. And the region we're going to be in is an area I like to call the Ross Sea Islands. There are a series of uncharted islands just beyond Lemma Island that I previously marked on the map there. Right now, you can see the set of islands that is the southernmost part of those uncharted islands. In that area, you'll encounter a lot of hickorus, cads, and the occasional small ship. But all sea monster hunting is fairly lucrative on its own. Each monster has a chance to drop 100 mil in silver for the guild, and their parts and medians are also pretty lucrative as well. However, the parts do vary in price, and of course the easier the sea monster, the less expensive it is. But all sea monsters do in fact drop medians, which tend to be around 100,000 silver each. So if you can get a series of medians, it is also lucrative. Right now I'm going to show you the best ways to go about attacking sea monsters. It actually is not the cannons, and this has become pretty well-known knowledge. Charging is effective. Here though I'm going to show you two methods. QWT is what you need in order to charge. Charge is the basic skill you learn first out when you take to the seas. You do not need any kind of high level in order to charge, it is the first skill you learn. Other skills come later. As you can see here, I'm using QWT. The reason I'm doing this is because with QWT you're able to charge from a standstill. You back up and you charge. Back up and you charge. When you're backing up, you want to position yourself in such a way as to follow the movements of the sea monsters. If your graphics are high enough, you'll be able to see little water spouts leading in the direction of where the sea monsters go. It's the exact same water spouts you see when a whale is turning or changing directions. Now, I'm using a method here where I QWT and charge into the sea monster using the mouse to direct my camera movement. However, when you get more experience, you can use click to move, which is what I was just showing there. With click to move, you're able to take your cursor, and as you get close, do something like homing in on the actual monster. It's pretty effective because there's a lot of desyncing on the sea. Another option that I can show right here is to come to a complete standstill, wait until there's no animations going on. All animations end when the camera zooms in to the ship. Once that happens, you can press SRT and come to a complete stop. Here again I'm going to show QWT and the homing technique that I use. A lot of people use click to move for various reasons, but I use it for this reason to home in. And what I mean by home in is you simply QWT, press control to bring up your mouse, have click to move on, mouse over the monster until it turns into a sword icon, and left click your ship will automatically home in on the monster and try to get charged in the best place as possible. The reason I do this as well is because, again, there is a lot of desync on the ocean. So if you do this, as you can see here, you'll have a great opportunity to get more hits in on the sea monster, even if you overshoot it, and even if the sea monster sinks or desyncs out of the ocean and out of the way of your ship because of the way the mechanics work in terms of the click to move option. Other players use click to move in other ways, such as being able to turn around very fast or make a complete 180. 
but this movement of homing in, as you can see here, allows you to get shots on the sea monster even when your ship passes through the sea monster. Now the trick with QWT and charging, as you can see from the minimap, is you want to charge as soon as the sea monster is within or slightly just within, but not outside of, the white circle that's outlined on your sea map in the area to the right. You want to make sure that the sea monster is able to be hit while within. You don't want to undershoot your charge and you don't want to overshoot it either. But again, when you get comfortable with the click to move method, you will be able to charge at sea monsters and still hit them if you click appropriately. Also to clarify, if you're too far away and you mouse over the sea monster, the sword icon will not appear. So you have to be careful with that as well. As you can see here, one of the guild items, the 100,000 or 100 mil guild item dropped from that particular hickory. This is random and the drop chance is fairly low, but you can heighten it with item scrolls and other things. Another thing to note that's very important is these two items here. These both restore the stamina of your ship. The blue one restores 50%, and I just used it there to get myself back up. The green one restores 10. They both have independent CDs, so you can use one or the other or both together. This will lengthen your time in the ocean. But be careful when at sea, because at times you will be stopped when the skies become kind of misty. You'll get stopped by things called ghost ships. Ghost ships can be taken out by cannons, or if you're hunting with friends, by other ships charging them. Additionally, you can get away from ghost ships by simply going to your character select screen, and they will despawn. When you're out in the ocean, it's also important to take the correct provisions with you. Things to repair your ship, and other things such as the breezy crystals, which you can get from completing sea monster quests, which come from Velia and Etheria, or crafting them yourself in Etheria. Most of these ship parts and the ways to build these ships, such as the one I'm driving here, come from places like Etheria. And again, getting things like Breezy Crystals and their parts also come from Etheria. However, once you get on the oceans, you don't need much. This particular ship here is entirely plus five green parts, sails, cannons, etc. It's nothing fancy yet is capable of getting the job done. Again, keys you need to remember are QWT, RST to come to a full stop when not in the animation, and when you get really good at it, click to move when you get close to sea monsters so you can home in on them. Again, I'll show you more of this method with click to move here, but also keep in mind that whenever the camera is zoomed out away from the ship, you are in an animation and it is hard to use other abilities like SRT, QWT, etc. when going around the ocean. You have to wait for the animations to stop for that to happen. And as I showed previously, once you ram into the monster, back up, come to a complete stop, QWT, and aim accordingly. One more thing to note is how to repair your ship. These repair the health icon on your ship. You can get these ship repair parts from simply processing any type of timber, not logs, but timber, maple, cedar, ash, anything works. Process it twice in order to get ship repair tools. Once you're on the ocean, this gives you time to repair your mass while waiting for your breezy crystals to come off CD, and you can spend an entire lifetime on the ocean. Thanks for watching, and subscribe if this video was helpful to you. As always, I'm the Red Marmot signing off.